One. Okay, this is how we're going to show you how to make a fire on a pellet stove. So, um, first you have to open this latch over here. And then you have to put some of that stuff up there. And into here. Up there is the fire starter and down here are the pellets. Okay, so my dad, um, he's... He's um just taking some of that off. He's gonna fan it out and then put it in the fire. The fanning it out doesn't really do anything. Yeah. You know, super cool, but it just makes it a little bit easier yeah. for the fire to spread. And then um he's going to press some buttons. Press start. This is the heat output. This yeah. is the blower speed. So I just turn them both to one. And then, and then I take my fanned out fire starter. You can hold that. Fingers on top. Fun. There you go. And then um, he's going to light that. And then he's going to put it in the fire. And I put it fan part. Let it burn just a little bit. Get it started. And then I put the fan part down, close this door, and start the auger. Right there, the bottom button. That should be good. Now the fire starts, and the pellets drop in, and it should be good to go. Good job, Ethan. Thank you for helping. Jojo. So take a bow. Take a bow. <laughs> Good job, buddy. Okay, to fill up the hopper with pellets, you take a bag of pellets, rip open the top, lift up the lid, and fill it up. This little mechanism here is, it'll get hot. It's not hot right now because I just started a fire, but just pull it up once or twice, and that kind of cleans off the top grate or the blower area. So let's adjust the flame to make sure that it's not going to fill up with pellets and it'll burn them all. So down here to the left of the pellet stove there's a little knob. And you just pull that out about a quarter of an inch. And if it's a strong flame it won't be like a rolling flame. It'll be real spiky like that. So here's more of the rolling flame. And that'll, that won't burn all the pellets. Pull it out a quarter of an inch, it turns like that. A little bit quicker flame. So that's it. To turn off the stove, all you have to do is open your little control panel door here and push the hopper off. Pellets will stop dropping in and the fire will go up by itself, the fan will stop by itself. One useful bit of information is this is the heat output, this is the blower speed, it says it right below the little button, and this is to start everything up. Um, you want to have the heat output and the blower speed, um, probably one for this week is okay, but if you want to turn it up, then they both should be the same. Hello. Alright, so this is how to feed the chickens, the dogs, and the cat. We've had, we've had a problem with the chickens here. Oh, there goes Boomer, chasing them away. We've had a problem with a few of the chickens um, when they know that it, the cat's getting fed. Um, they come around because they love the cat food. It's very high in fat, so um, I'll just show you. This is where we feed Yabo in here in her little cave and her little, her little house. And so we just take off the Folgers can and fill it up just a little bit because the chickens will eat what she what she doesn't so um, and yeah here they are waiting for me so what I do is after I feed Yabo so to kind of discourage them from stealing her food is I will grab in this cabinet you can see it in this cabinet I have a scooper that I'll fill up with a little bit of chicken scratch or chicken food and then I'll take it over close to the shop so that they're out of the way. Oh, 
They love me. They love me. All right. Here you go, girls. That'll, that'll keep them away for a while. Now to feed the dogs. Dog food is here. Boomer back. Okay, what I'll do is I'll take the cup, fill it up, kind of like a heaping, a heaping cup. Wait. Wait. Sit down. Sit down. And then we'll we'll pray. Lady, sit. Sit. Lady, sit. Good girl. We say, dear Lord, thank you for this puppy food. Bless it to our puppy bodies. In your name. Amen. All right. Come here, lady. Eat your food. Good girl. We're on to feeding the chickens. So here we go. First, I'll check for eggs. Oh, we got a few here. Boom, boom, and boom. So we want to clear those out probably every day, every other day um, during the winter because it's not so hot that they go bad if you leave them a day. But I just check for, for broken ones or if ones have a little little grossness on them or whatever. You can just rinse them off. Um, no soap because it'll soak into the egg. But you can rinse them off uh, with just some lukewarm water, not cold water because the bacteria and stuff will leach into the egg itself. So just check them for cracked ones and then I gather them all up and then take them and put them in the fridge. A lot of these don't even need to be clean, like that one's super, super clean, so we're good. Awesome. All right, now to change the chicken's water and the food, take a little hike up inside the, the fenced in area. Looks like they have quite a bit of food right now. And I'll take it off the hook here. And then just bring this whole thing down with me. And then fill it up in the, t in the, in the tall cabinet. Um, water, if it's, if it's about half full, you can just kind of clean it out a little bit. Um, and that's fine. But it's pretty low, so I may, I may just take this right now and go fill the whole thing up. Ooh, we have an assassin chicken. Okay, now for changing the chicken's water. Oh, at the same time, it's kind of hard to do with one hand. At the same time, I will fill up the dog's water. Okay, I've finished washing out the chicken water and I filled it up. Wash the base. This one screws on to the top here. It's kind of hard to do with one hand. And then, and then you just flip it over and we're, we're good to go.